Hey, what's up everyone? In this video we're going to talk about precipitation reactions and in the images on the left and right hand sides of your screen are just a few examples of precipitation reactions occurring. So let's go ahead and talk about what's going on with these reactions. So the main idea here is that when you mix solutions of two ionic compounds together, sometimes that can result in the formation of an insoluble solid called a precipitate. Notice the pronunciation. The noun form of the word is usually pronounced precipitate, meaning I have formed a precipitate coming out of my solution. And then the verb form of the word is pronounced precipitate. So I have a solid that's insoluble that precipitates out of the solution. I have the formation of a precipitate. It's sort of like advocate, the verb form, and advocate, the noun form. So you can pronounce it like that or however you want to pronounce it. I really don't care. So that's what's going on. You mix two aqueous solutions together uh, and you get a solid that's insoluble that comes out of it. It precipitates out, it forms a precipitate. So let's talk about the actual reaction itself. So precipitation reactions are actually a type of double replacement reactions. And basically the way that a double replacement reaction works is you have two ionic compounds that we're going to call A, B, and C, D reacting together. So A and C would be cations and B and D would be the anions. And basically, the ions basically swap partners with one another. So on the product side of things, cation A now pairs up with the anion of the other compound, which is D. And then C, which is the cation of the second reactant, pairs up with anion B of the other reactant. So they're basically just swapping partners. Now in the event of a precipitation reaction, both ionic compounds A, B, and C, D must be water soluble. So they have to be water soluble in order to form an aqueous solution that you can mix together. So they're both water soluble. And then with uh, your products, one of your products uh, in a precipitation reaction is going to be, at least one of them, is usually just one of them, is going to be insoluble in water. And because it's insoluble, it comes out of the solution, it does not dissolve, and it turns into this cloudy looking solid that we call a precipitate. So the way that we should apply uh, solubility and uh, within chemical equations, especially within precipitation reaction equations, is that if one of your products is soluble in water, what's going to happen is it's going to dissociate into ions. It's not, those ionic bonds are not going to remain intact. Instead, you're going to have cations and anions freely floating around within that aqueous solution. And the way that we usually represent that is by um, is by putting AQ in parentheses for the state of matter. AQ means aqueous, that means it's dissolved in water. On the other hand, if you have a product that is insoluble in water, well, these products don't dissociate. They don't break up into their constituent ions. The ionic bonds holding them together remain intact. They do not dissolve in the water, and therefore we, rep we represent them uh, with an S. Uh, which stands for solid. So we have to be careful because S does not stand for soluble, it stands for solid, uh, which only takes place when you have an insoluble compound. So as an example, well, NaCl, sodium chloride, uh, that's a soluble ionic compound, so it breaks up into the sodium ion, the Na+, and the chloride ion, the Cl-, and they are both considered aqueous. They're dissolved in the water, freely floating around. Each ion is uh, dissolved and surrounded by water molecules. So an aqueous solution of sodium chloride doesn't actually have any sodium bonded to any chloride ions. Instead, each of those ions is dissolved and surrounded by water molecules to make that aqueous solution. So this is a better representation of an aqueous solution of sodium chloride right here. For an insoluble compound, whether it's in water or not, like silver chloride, AgCl, well it does not break up into ions, so writing it out as two individual ions would be inappropriate. Instead, we give it the same formula, AgCl, uh, and we give it uh, an S for solid. So again, S stands for solid, not soluble. So let's go through an example of such a reaction where we have an insoluble product. So consider this reaction here between aqueous silver nitrate and aqueous sodium chloride. So this is going to be a double replacement reaction. We have two ionic compounds uh, coming together. So we need to be able to predict the double replacement products of, these reaction, of this reaction. And again, all that's going to happen is each cation is going to pair up with the anion of the other reactant. So in the products, silver is going to pair up with the chloride ion to make silver chloride, AgCl. 
And then sodium ion is going to pair up with nitrate to make sodium nitrate, NaNO3. Now in this case I've given both of them question marks because we have not yet figured out whether these two products are uh, soluble or insoluble and therefore um, and therefore aqueous or solid respectively. And to do that we must refer to the solubility rules. So if you'd like to learn more about the solubility rules please feel free to check out my last video. I talked all about the solubility rules, how to use them, how to interpret them, and all that stuff. So if you need to uh, refresh your memory of solubility rules feel free to check out that video. So now that's what we're going to do. We're going to use the solubility rules to determine the solubility of each of these products, whether they deserve an S for solid or an AQ for aqueous. So let's start with silver chloride. Now let's refer to the solubility rules and see if we can't find a rule uh, that might apply to silver chloride. Okay, so what's catching my eye is this rule over here where we have uh, a solubility rule for chlorides, bromides, and iodides. They are generally soluble in water, however, silver chloride is an exception and is therefore insoluble in water. So we just figured out that because silver chloride is insoluble in water, it's going to get an S for solid, not an AQ for aqueous. Now we can do the same for sodium nitrate. So we refer back to the solubility rules. Notice that the top two rules are all about sodium and about nitrate, and sodium salts and nitrate salts are both soluble with no exceptions. So sodium nitrate is definitely going to be soluble and therefore it gets an AQ for aqueous, not an S for solid. So right now what we've done is we've just um, predict, we predicted the products and we assigned the correct states of matter because uh, due to their solubility in water. And now what we have to do is balance this chemical equation. Now for this particular chemical equation, balancing is very easy because if you look closely, uh, coefficients of one for all of the reactants and products are going to have this equation balanced. They're not always going to be this easy, but it's not really my intention to teach balancing in this lesson. I just want to teach about precipitation reactions. But if you move on to another example, at this stage, once you've predicted the products, uh, then you have to balance the equation before you move any further. So now what we're going to do is we're going to rewrite this equation in a way that sort of better represents what's actually going on within that reaction vessel. So we're going to actually take everything that is uh, labeled with an uh, AQ for aqueous and we're going to write this, uh, like I said, in a way that better represents what's going on. Anything that's considered aqueous dissociates in water. None of those ionic bonds holding an aqueous compound uh, are remaining intact once that thing gets dissolved. So we can rewrite this equation in a way that better illustrates that. Uh, so the uh, silver nitrate, the sodium chloride, and the sodium nitrate, all of those are going to be broken up into their constituent ions. The silver chloride, on the other hand, is not going to dissociate because it's an insoluble compound, so we would expect the silver chloride to form this cloudy looking solid that immediately precipitates out of that solution once these two compounds are mixed together. And you can try this reaction for yourself if you have the chemicals and you'll see that indeed that does happen. So we're going to write an equation that better illustrates what's going on. So let's start with the silver nitrate. We're going to, we're going to write out silver nitrate uh, instead of all uh, be silver and nitrate being bonded together. We're going to write it how it truly is in an aqueous solution which is broken up into ions. So on the reactant side starting with silver nitrate we would have silver ion aqueous Ag plus uh, plus the nitrate ion which is NO3 minus. That'll take care of the silver nitrate. Now we can move on to the sodium chloride. We're going to do that in a very similar fashion. We're going to bust that up into its constituent ions. And so for sodium chloride we will have the uh, sodium ion that's Na plus aqueous. And then we're going to add to that the chloride ion which is Cl minus which is also aqueous. Now that takes care of the reactant side of the equation. Now I can draw in my reaction arrow. And then we can uh, start focusing on the products. So for silver chloride, remember that does not dissociate, so we're just going to leave that formula alone. It'll still be AgCl, not broken up into ions, with, uh, with an S for solid. And then the sodium nitrate, the other product, since that's aqueous, we're going to write that as if it is uh, broken up into ions. So that's going to be the sodium ion, Na+, that's aqueous. And then we're going to add to that the nitrate ion, NO3-, minus which is also aqueous. So again, what we've done is we've just rewritten this equation in a way that really it really tells a better story because again, those aqueous compounds, those ions within those aqueous compounds aren't really bonded together. Instead, you just have a bunch of cations and a bunch of anions freely floating around 
within an aqueous solution. So this is a much better illustration of what's really going on. And this has a name. It's called a complete ionic equation. It shows all of those soluble aqueous compounds broken up into ions. Notice that complete ionic equations get pretty lengthy. I, didn't, I wasn't able to write the whole equation on one line. But if you have very small handwriting, you might be able to do that. Um, notice uh, another thing about uh, the uh, complete ionic equation. Notice that there are some ions that appear on both sides of the equation. And it's at this point that chemical equations start to bear a striking resemblance to mathematical equations. So let's see if we can't identify any ions that appear on both the reactant side and the product side of this equation. It looks to me like we have a nitrate ion on both sides. There's a nitrate ion on the left, nitrate ion on the right. We also have a sodium ion on both sides. Sodium on the left here and sodium on the right down there. Now these ions that have been marked with uh, green asterisks, the ones that appear on both sides of the equation, are called spectator ions. And spectator ions is a pretty appropriate term because they're just kind of sitting on the sidelines. They're watching. They're not really undergoing any chemical change. So they're not really participating in the reaction. You still need them to balance out the charges of your other ions that are actually participating in the reaction. Um, but they're not really undergoing any chemical change. They're just spectators. They're not reacting. Okay. So like I said before, just like a mathematical equation, Anything that appears on both sides of an equation can be removed. You can cancel those things out to simplify that equation down. So we're going to do just that with this chemical equation here. So we're going to simplify our complete ionic equation uh, by removing those spectator ions. And the resulting equation looks like this. We have silver ion aqueous plus chloride ion aqueous yields solid silver chloride. And this type of equation also has a name. It's called a net ionic equation. So it's basically the equation that results uh, once all of the spectator ions have been removed from the complete ionic equation. So there's a lot of vocabulary in this section here. So let's go ahead and recap what we have done uh, to get all the way from the reactants all the way to our net ionic equation for the precipitation reaction. So again, starting with the reactants, what we did was we just predicted the double replacement products of the reaction by just swapping partners with cations and anions. Once we predicted the products of the reaction, well, we used the solubility rules to determine uh, whether the products are considered solid or aqueous. Once we did that, well, we had, to, we had to balance the equation, of course. All chemical equations have to be balanced, but in this example, it was really easy. Once we predicted uh, the states of matter of those products, we wrote a complete ionic equation by taking everything that was aqueous and breaking it up into its constituent ions. And remember that complete ionic equation is a better, more adequate description of what's really going on in that beaker or that flask. And then finally, once we had our complete ionic equation, we converted that into a net ionic equation by simply canceling out and removing all of those spectator ions, those ions that appear on both sides of the equation. So it's a one, two, three, four step process. Five if you include the actual balancing of the chemical equation. A lot of places where you can mess up, so it's very important that you at least can read your own handwriting and that you are familiar with the solubility rules, or at least you have access to a solubility rules table uh, so you don't make any errors. Okay, so that was it. Uh, I would certainly appreciate any feedback that you might have for me. I hope this uh, was somehow helpful to you. And that is it. Have a good one.